video. I apologize, by the way, that I'm, I'm doing all this on the move. We're, we we got the keys to a new apartment, like, literally today. And so we're on our way over there right now. Uh, that's no worries, man. This is dedication, honestly. So I, I'm impressed. I love it. Well, we got yeah, video uh, going. Any other guest I would have flaked out on, Jacob Gidry, but a fellow Jacob, I have to <laughs> come through for you. Us Jacobs have to stay together, yeah. All right. Well, if we're ready to go, all right, I'm going to get this thing going. Here we go in three, two, one. Just drop that ass, bitch. It's open micers in the house. Pop that pussy with that open micers logo in your mouth. Jason with his bald ass head. Jacob looking in bed. It's open micers, bitch. Heard what I said. Drop that ass, drop that ass. Open micers in the house. Drop that ass, pop that pussy. Open micers in the house. Open micers in the house. Open micers in the mouse. Drop that ass, pop that pussy. Open micers in the house. The mic is now open. That's right. The mic is now open. My name is Jason Robbins, and Jacob has escaped his usual Ukraine bunker, and he is on the move. I am on the run, boys. They don't, they don't know what's fixing to hit them. <laughs> I am on the move. I am going to do this entire podcast episode from the passenger seat of the car, so I, I apologize for any noise pollution in advance, but uh, we just I just got the keys. To our own place for the first time ever and we are on our way over there right now and we are very excited for it well that's awesome <laughs> congratulations that's awesome. but thanks man i guess i can introduce our guest jason since i'm yeah. since i'm coming in a little better since i'm done with the technical difficulties hopefully um this guy who is is somebody that i've heard a lot of very good things about um i've i've followed him from a distance for quite a while now he is the proprietor, and I hope I'm using that word correctly, of Lake Charles Comedy. He is one of the best comedians in that area. It is the one and only Jacob Gidry. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thank you all for having me on the podcast. I appreciate it. Uh, I also want to say thank you. I know you said you've heard a lot of good things. Obviously, you've been talking to my mom, sweet lady. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Really- I've, I've been talking to her a lot. <laughs> All right, well, listen here, you son of a bitch, okay? She is a nice lady. She's a lovely lady, Jacob. I should know. I know. I've been talking to her <laughs> for a week now. <laughs> oh, um, but, fun, uh, fun but, start to the fun. What? <laughs> no, I don't know. You, you talk now. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, how is the, uh, the Lake Charles scene going over there? I haven't been to Lake Charles in probably at least two decades that I've been to Lake Charles. Well, Lake Charles is doing pretty good, man. We, uh, so I took over the scene, uh, in 2021 right after cause COVID hit. And then we had a couple hurricanes that hit that destroyed the town. And, um, so it was, a, it was a while before anything like got back up and running. Uh, cause any places that were willing to do shows, even with COVID going around, it was, they, they were, you know, destroyed, so we couldn't really do much. Uh, but got a show running at a brewery there back in 2021 in July. Been running shows there ever since. I've got a couple rooms that I do now, OBs. Uh, and then I also do a library riot. I bring in national touring acts. Get people in from, uh, from all, a lot of people from Austin and Houston. Good friends with a lot of those guys. And then old JP over in uh, Lafayette helps me out getting some bookings uh, bringing people through. So I brought in like Lisa Curry, Jeff Dye was a really cool one that I had. Um, Daryl Felsberg, Caleb sign in a bunch of like, you know, B level comics who have like good credits and stuff. They're not as well known, but can really rock a room. Yeah. I hope I get there one day where I'm introduced to the B level comic with a lot of good credits. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, is that a mean thing to say? Like, hey, like, hey, this guy's a B-level comic, you know? He's not like, he's got some of the same credits the bigger guys have. Sure, he was on Netflix. He was just a writer. You know, he wasn't you know, the main star of the sitcom, but he was there. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I Like, in my career now, I'd be flattered to be introduced as a B-level comic, but I feel like, you know, I mean, Jeff Dye have, was on two, like, primetime NBC shows. Oh. I feel like, you know, like he might take a little offense. No, he's he's an exception. 
He's an exception. I'm not talking about him, of course. Yeah, he's definitely like a like an A S tier comic for sure. Uh, but all the rest of them, yes. <laughs> yeah, all the rest of them, fuck them. Never. Fuck yeah, them yeah, yeah, fuck that piece <laughs> of shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I wouldn't mind be call, being called a, a B tier comedian. It's much. It's much better than being uh, referred to as abject failure. <laughs> <laughs> well, stop listening to your dad. That's what you should have done yeah. from the get go. Yeah. <laughs> What about you guys? Where are y'all from? I, I don't know anything about you two. Uh, well, me and Jacob kind of we got both got our start <clears throat> on the same exact night, but we didn't actually become friends until years later because um, uh, J- Jacob was like sixteen <laughs> when we did uh, open mic together for the very first. Well, wasn't an, it wasn't even an open mic? It was actually a booked show, and I had never done yeah, it was a, a stand up gig. Yeah. <laughs> And y'all both got paid? I don't remember getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> no, neither of us got paid. It's not it's not like you know, it was it was literally someone's birthday in a bar with like all the other acts were musicians. Nice. Yeah, so then a couple of years later we uh we met again at a, uh there was a place before COVID hit here on the coast. There was a place called the Wayward Kraken and they started doing open mics on Monday nights and it really took off. And uh, started bringing a lot of you know uh, local area comedians into Biloxi, and they were starting to get bigger named acts there. And then, um, of course, COVID hit, and then that's when me and Jacob decided to uh, to start the podcast so we could still kind of keep sharp and talk to other comedians. But did Lake Charles? Uh, shut down at all during COVID, or did you guys do like down here on the coast? It was like we were shut down for like seven hours and then everything yeah. opened back up it's like yeah do we really have to wear a mask i don't know you yeah, know it's optional and then I, <laughs> yeah exactly i remember everyone's very skeptical about it uh and then honestly dude like I, it felt like covid only last because I, obviously everything shut down i was still in college at that time so i just I, I was already cheating i was in business and so i was able to just you know cheat even harder and you know wrap up <laughs> my semester i had almost all a's which i never had in college that semester it was it was awesome uh but then that summer uh like it was an end of august is whenever we got hit with the hurricanes and that was like i remember driving out to go to steins to get a generator and i was like wow it's like COVID was cured no one gives a shit anymore <laughs> Nobody it was we, we all had like this really, you know, difficult thing to deal with. So nobody it was like COVID just kind of like disappeared. For, I mean, obviously it was still around, uh, but it was just like that was on nobody's minds at that point. So, I, you know, if I ever left or talked to other people outside, they're like, oh, my God, y'all aren't y'all aren't still locked down. Y'all are still doing this. And I was like, no, like everyone's I mean, not much of anything is open anyways, but people are just trying to recover. Yeah. So Lake Charles, you guys, you do have casinos there, don't you? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. about five minutes from my house. Okay. Yeah, I was I was gonna ask if um if they had any big name comedians come through there because we get a, quite a few here in Biloxi at the bigger casinos mm-hmm. like the Beau Rivage and stuff. But I I just remember back the la- I think the last time I was in Lake Charles was probably two thousand four, so at least mm-hmm. twenty years ago. That's crazy, man. Uh, I, yeah, they, they bring in big names through the casinos. Most of the time, it's the it's the blue collar comedy tour people. Yeah. So you got Ron White, Bill Ingvall, Jeff Foxworthy, Larry the Cable Guy's coming in a couple weeks. Uh, Rodney Carrington, <laughs> big people, big Rodney Carrington crowd over here. He's here like uh, every other week at the bar. Yeah, Bye. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> is that? I mean, I get it. You know, Titties and Beer is a cool song. You know, I, I'll sing along to <laughs> hey, it too. He's gotten some <laughs> mileage out of that song, man. Let me he tell you. Has. That's what we need to do, Jacob. We need to write a titties and beer song that we can just coast on for the next 20 <laughs> years. Or we should start like a buddy cop sitcom show. I'm down for that, too. Either one. That would be good. What What would it be called? Titties, titties and, and beer. beer. <laughs> titties and beer. <laughs> uh, I like it. We could start writing that this week. Yeah, it would probably get sued by Rodney Carrot and all people. Does he know how lawyers work or like any other like first world thing? Not really. I doubt like, <laughs> I always wonder that about like comedians like uh, who are like country oriented. Like, 
you know, if, if they were to be played into like the New York comedy cellar, would they be relatable at all? Would they have anything to joke about? Would they know how the world works. I only caught about half of that. What about you, Jake? Okay. <laughs> about about the same, yeah. I think he was saying like if if you know someone like that goes to the stand, how would they, would they even be relatable to the people there? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Oh, who does love titties and beer? You know. I don't know if New York has a a, a taste for redneck comedy. I, I wouldn't. At least I wouldn't think so. I don't know if they played the last time Rodney came through y'all's way, but they played on the radio. I, I would get it on my on my Spotify, and it'd be like Rodney Carrington coming to the Golden Nugget Casino, and it'd be like, man, I don't understand how people can afford groceries. You know, I go down to the the gas station. And I'm like, let me get a box of them flies, not for the fish, but for me. <laughs> and that was the joke, <laughs> or a box of worms, whatever. Either way, it doesn't. It's not. It's not. I'm like, this is this is what they're putting out. From his whole hour, this is what they've got, and then you know that place is going to sell out. Yeah, why? I, I just I don't understand. Yeah, I get those same commercials. Like when I'm listening to my my podcast during the the during the day, I usually get I'll be listening to a podcast, and then all of a sudden, blasting in my ears is Creed, and it's like <laughs> the voice of Creed, Scott Stapp, <laughs> coming to the Beau Ravage. I'm like, who wants to go see Scott Stapp? I mean, really, but you know the place is going to sell out. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'm not going to lie, man. I run a karaoke on Saturdays, and uh, I fucking love just grabbing the mic and be like, all right, up next is Jacob. <laughs> He's already here, guys. This is Creed again. And then I just, <laughs> and I do Hire by Creed. It's such a, it's such a good song, man. It's like Nickelback. They get hated on, I feel like. Uh, it's just they just got so overplayed. I could go the rest of my life and never hear another Creed song. I'd be happy. Yeah, it, I mean, of course they're gonna sell out. I I bought every ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, God damn, there's a lot of Jacobs coming to this show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And ja just Jacob by himself, like front and center, right in front of the, the stage, screaming for Scott Stapp at the top of his lungs. I'm just gonna be like, do the Creed song. <laughs> so I mean, he, he's apparently they they'll play some uh, like clips of like his uh, solo stuff. I'm like, who knows that stuff? Does anybody know Scott Stapp's solo record stuff? Can't say that I do. I mean, you're the super fan. You got to be the one that that at least bought the album or, or the single. Oh, I don't know. I didn't even know he was still making music. This is all just a meme for me right now. It really is. It's a big meme. It's it's it, it meme. is. It's just meme. And it's weird how like memes make things like come back into circulation. Mm -hmm. Like that murder on the dance floor song when that uh the Brightburn movie or whatever came out, Saltburn, whatever it's called. And uh right guys. See, I haven't even seen that movie yet. Yeah. No, I saw I saw it. It was a dog shit movie. Really? Yeah, it looked, why, like, why it 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 looked like it was dog shit. But every I, girl I knew was like, oh, I, I DJ. And every girl was like, oh my God, can you please play Murder on the Dance Floor? Can you play Murder on the Dance Floor? It's from this new movie out called Saltburn. And I'm like, oh, the one where he drinks cum off the bathtub? No ew. thanks. I don't, yeah. yeah. It's no, a weird-ass movie. He literally puts his mouth on the drain and he goes, and just gets, gets it all out of there. Um, all right. I don't know where to go from there. <laughs> but if you've seen Jacob Elordi, then you would too. Uh, I mean, sure. Good Lord. I'd rather see Sidney Sweeney. That's just me. Jason doesn't know who either of those people are. I mean, I know who Sidney Sweeney is. I know who she is. I, I yeah, don't... that's the Demon Barber, right? That you know, uh, Johnny Depp played? You yeah, know, that guy. <laughs> You know how old I am? I don't even know what murder on the dance floor is. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I thought it was a song from like the early 2000s, like 2001 or something. It could be. I stopped paying attention to pop culture in like 98, probably. <laughs> I don't blame you. That's, That's when I was Jason. born. What did you say, Jacob? I said, That's how old you are. Like You, you stopped being relevant. Well over 30 years ago. Hey, I'm fine with that. So, you know, whatever.
Well, all right, so I'll just keep it going since <laughs> apparently Jacob is, uh, uh, I don't know, he's off in space somewhere. So Actually, I need to call. I'm, I'm which, not in space, I'm in the car. I'm gonna call uh, uh, Jacob Guidry. I'm gonna I'm gonna call you Jacob One, and and uh, idiot Jacob is Jacob Two. So that, that works. That's how we're gonna work this thing out. So Jacob One, please tell us. Since this is the Open Micers podcast, please tell us about your very first open mic experience. I'm gonna be honest. I can't remember my first open mic. I think it was in. It might have been Lafayette. Because I did, whenever I first started off, I didn't know that there was any comedy going on in Lake Charles. And I was in a fraternity at the college here. And I, we we used to have like a lot of parties at this bar. And I knew the manager. And I was like, dude, I really want to try stand-up. Can me and my buddy do a night of stand-up where like nothing's going on? He was like, yeah, sure. So we did this show. Me and him both did 30 minutes of material we'd never done before on stage. We'd never even been on stage to do stand-up before. And it was dog shit. It was absolutely <laughs> terrible. And but I think the first, because uh, we did a couple shows like that. We did some daiquiri, sh- uh, daiquiri shacks, which are the worst places to do stand up. Because it's a bunch of plant workers at like 7, 8 p.m. at night who just got off their shift and don't want to listen to you. One of the guys was telling the jokes and he was like, hey, man, like I'm over here. I'm about to, you know, tell some jokes. And the dude was like, he's like 10 feet from him. And he was like, you're over there and I'm over here, bud. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and he just kept drinking. And for people who aren't from Louisiana listening to the show, uh, everybody around Louisiana knows that Louisiana has daiquiri shacks. And these are drive through daiquiri places where you can just drive through and get yourself it's an alcoholic beverage, and it's okay because it's got a little paper, uh, piece of paper on the straw. As long as you don't take that little piece of paper off, you're fine if you get pulled over. Absolutely. You can still drink through the top of the lid, but as long as that yeah. you know piece of paper <laughs> and the tape is still there, you're good. See, that's so the pro move. for explaining move. our alcoholism. See, Jacob One knows the, the pro move right there. You, you take the top off and drink out of it, and the cop pulls you over. You put the top back on. It's like, see, still got the paper on it. Exactly. I actually have a funny story about leaving a daiquiri shop, if y'all would like to hear it. Sure. Man, so I was, uh, I had broken up with this girl, and I was a virgin at the time. We had never, So we never had sex for the whole time that me and this girl dated. And uh, we were leaving a daiquiri shop one time, and she had found out that I had had sex. And she was very upset with me. And she was like, she was like, all cool, all funny. And then she was like, I heard you had sex. And this is after you broke up or? Yeah, this was after. This was like we were both drunk at the bar one night and like, you know, we just kind of like met up with each other. And uh, so then she she went to pull out and whenever she did, she almost hit a vehicle. And I was like, damn, you should watch out. And as soon as I said that, that vehicle's lights turned on and we got pulled over and then she got two tickets and then... Nothing happened after that. But Daiquiri Shacks can be a fun place, man. Uh, as long as you're not doing comedy there. Just don't do comedy at one of those. Yeah, but those places aren't very big. At least the ones <clears throat> that I've been into. Like, you just kind of walk in and, you know, the counter is like, you know, a couple of steps in front of you. Like, where do you do comedy? Are you like, are you behind the counter doing comedy while you're like serving people <laughs> daiquiris? <laughs> We're in the corner under the TV that's playing the Michael Jackson Thriller music video. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. See, I thought it <laughs> there is been... one. There's I... one really big daiquiri place in Lake Charles called Frosty's, and they have a nice stage and everything that they have set up. And I've done stand up there, but the PA system is terrible. It doesn't reach to the back, and they have four pool tables. And they're like, "Yeah, we have regulars that come in. We're not shutting down the pool tables." So people are just playing pool the whole time. While you're trying to do stand up, which is never a good idea, and, and the, it's always great when you're trying to to tell jokes and all you hear is, yeah. uh, pull yeah, balls. Yeah, and... that's the only noise he ever hears during his set. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> yeah, one Not of me and Jacob. Just to say that, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> one of <laughs> one of mine and Jacob's worst times was in a place that was half pool hall half nerd bar and of course we started up the comedy and all the uh the bikers who were over on the pool side 
didn't want to hear comedy. And a fight immediately broke out when the comedy started. So that was a fun night. Dude, that is crazy. I've, uh, I've, have y'all ever had, like, like were they trying to fight y'all? No, they were uh, just the crowd fighting each other, like, you know, like like rednecks do. <laughs> you know, they just like to fight. Classic. Drink and fight. That's what they like to do. Not much else to do. Besides procreate, yeah, apparently, unfortunately. Yeah. Growing up in Mississippi, the thing there are to do is drink and fight because you can do them. And we lost Jacob officially. Jacob too. So <laughs> uh, we'll just keep this train a rolling. So Jacob won. Uh, any other? Uh, how long ago was that you that you did your your first open mic? How long have you been doing comedy? That was a little over four years ago. So 2019 is whenever I first started. So if uh, you're if you're running the scene now in Lake Charles, what's just kind of like your uh, your plan? Are you just kind of looking to just build up a scene or are you looking to actually take a, uh, take it on the road or just kind of build a following around Louisiana? Like kind of tell us what your plan is. I've been wondering that. Uh, I don't really know uh, what my plan is. I, what I know is that I do have something good going here uh, because I know that I can run pretty good shows and bring in uh, great comics. So I think my plan is to just, I, right now I'm, I know that I'm building a network of different comedians uh, and then in turn, now I'm to the point to where I know that I'm good enough to do like a, a solid 15, 20 minute set. Uh, I can headline the headline. Yeah, I can do like a, a good 30 minutes, but is it all going to be that, that great? No. Uh, but I know that I, I have enough to where I can travel and do showcases and open for people. Uh, I have a buddy of mine, T Ray Bergeron. Do you know him? Mm hmm. Yeah, I've done a done, done a lot of shows with him. Uh, so we're working on uh, like me and him are going to Colorado. We're going to San Marcos at the end of this month. Um, so that's where I see myself at, just trying to get on the road as much and doing shows because I get uh, doing time here in Lake Charles is fun. But I'm I'm very accustomed to the crowd. I get lazy with it, yeah. and if I'm on the road constantly, like doing new places, new venues, it, it helps keep me sharp and be on uh, be on my game, which is what I need. Cause that's whenever I get more creative, I end up writing better jokes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's really, that that's, that's the step is to try and get booked as much as I can in other places while keeping the comedy scene going here. So doing like half and half. And it's always cool when you're, when you're on the road with another comedian, like when me and Jacob travel, it always seems like there's some good stuff always comes out of the, com you know, the conversations that we have because we just come up with the stupidest shit while we're mm -hmm. just driving in the middle of nowhere. Agreed. And it's, it's nice to be around other people like you. Mm -hmm. Like I, I could, I live with my brother and I could tell my brother my jokes all day, all day long, but he's just gonna be like, Oh, okay. That, I don't think that's good. I, this is pretty good. I'm like, okay, but why? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, talking with other comics and hanging out, it really helps you. It keeps you sharp, man. It challenges you because you get to see what everybody else is good at. And it helps you see, like, maybe where your flaws might be and how you can improve on them and vice versa. Like, one of the coolest things I've – honestly, I love whenever people, like, give me a tag or something. It's like, hey, maybe you should try this out with your joke. Yeah. Because it's, it's always just like your mind's like a little box. And every time I hear that, I feel like my mind expands a little bit. And I get to, you know, figure out something new I never would have thought of. Yeah, and that's a weird thing. Like, it, it's – in the comedy community, when you're kind of – you know, becoming friends with other comedians and stuff like that. And you're just kind of hanging out at the shows and you're talking and like, Hey, I think this tag would be good. That's always cool. But then there's like the Facebook people. <laughs> there's a lot of comedians on Facebook now that are just like, I don't want any unsolicited advice <laughs> and just getting mean online. <laughs> yes. So, I Dude, those know, are my favorite. That was like a little meme a little while ago where all of the comics I knew were just posting like unsolicited comedy <laughs> advice. And it was just terrible advice to give people. I did one. I was like unsolicited comedy advice. Make sure to blame the crowd and never change your act. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's Jacob. <laughs> Hi. Unsolicited comedy advice. Quit. Yeah. <laughs> just please fucking just quit. Okay. Just, just stop. You're not ahead. Let's just stop. 
So you got anything you want to throw in, Jacob, while we got you for the five seconds that your your internet's stable? Yeah, dude. Um, I want to add this to the conversation because Jacob, one, said that, you know, inside our minds are like a box, right? And everyone knows that, like, you know, sometimes Gwyneth Paltrow's head is in a box. <laughs> so if Gwyneth Paltrow's head is in a box that's inside our mind, are we all Gwyneth Paltrow? That's pretty meta. I, I don't even know how to answer that. I'm going to have to go sit in the shower for like an hour and figure <laughs> this one out. Is this like a uh, being John Malkovich situation? No, it's like a seven situation. Do well, I have to make candles that smell like my vagina? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you want to make fifteen dollars. <laughs> That's perfect. I'll just counter sue somebody who ran into me while we were skiing. Let's just do that instead. <laughs> Is that something that she actually did? Dude, they made a whole documentary about it because somebody sued her, was trying to get a whole bunch of money out of her, and she was like, They ran into me. <laughs> I saw like a few clips from it. It was pretty funny. Yeah, didn't they award them like a dollar or something like that? Or she got a dollar, some something weird like that. Yeah, something weird. I don't think I don't think the other guy won because it it became very obvious that they were just trying to get money out of her. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think the judge awarded uh, her a dollar from them. That and that's what happened. Nice. Must be nice to be super rich. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I can't spare a dollar. I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Dude, I got to be honest, man. I've been looking at your background this whole time. I'm loving the background. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I do. So a, I was talking uh, to Jacob. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I was talking <laughs> I do, yeah, a, yeah. Uh, I do a, a retro gaming podcast, too, so I like to collect all kind of retro gaming stuff. Got got my uh, all my retro games over there. I'm looking at them in the boxes right over there. So I got a lot of cool stuff in here. I dig it. Nice, hell yeah. But uh, but what is the absolute worst? What is the worst either open mic experience or show you've ever done? Like, and if you've got heckled too. Like I like I love a good heckling story too. Yeah, I had a. My material wasn't that bad. I just never encountered a heckler like this before, and I didn't know how to handle it. And so I felt very flustered. So I was at a sh I was at an open mic in Houston, and it was a lot of people. There was a lot of people who went to the open mic that I've had come out to Lake Charles. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like they're not going to see me do a host set. They're going to see me do my material. This is kind of a hot crowd. This one lady over here won't stop talking. So uh, we lost him. <laughs> uh, we lost him. He should, he'll be back in a minute. Perfect. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> turn this. maybe who knows? We'll who see. Knows? It's, it's this might be a seven situation. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. If you're watching on uh, on the video right now, Jacob is just uh, he's having the worst time trying to stay uh, stay <laughs> logged in. But uh, but yeah, I'm having the worst time, dude. <laughs> Am I back? Yeah, you're back, but you don't have any video, so you'll. You'll pop in at some point, but let's, let's keep going. <laughs> Jacob one, tell us about these hecklers. Uh, so this lady had been heckling every single comic that went up there and I was like, okay, I'm going to get up there. She'll say something and I'll be like, Hey, shut the fuck up. And like funny way people laugh and be a good time. So I do it and it gets a really good response. Everybody's laughing. Even she laughs. I'm like, okay, cool. She's going to stop. Well, she does not stop. And she keeps heckling me and she said something else. And I was like, hey, once again, shut the fuck up. But it was in more of like an aggressive way that wasn't as funny. Yeah. And after I said that, she goes, oh, okay. I was trying to help you out, but not anymore. And her and her boyfriend, after every <laughs> single sentence I would say, would go, well, that's not funny. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you even say that? Dude, like for, for three minutes and I'm trying to ignore her and like turn to the other side and talk to people, but even they feel uncomfortable with it. And I just remember being so flustered. My face was so red. And uh, cause I just, I'd never dealt with that before. And uh, cause I'm not, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of crowd work. I can do it. Sometimes it's pretty funny, but for the most part, like I don't like veering away because I get lost. So I'll forget like where I'm at and what I'm doing mm -hmm. as far as like my jokes. So I try to avoid it as much as possible. But there's some people out there who are fantastic at it. And that is just not me. 
And, it, and that was just, uh, it was a very humbling experience. See, and the same thing happens to me, even, even when I don't have to deal with a, uh, a heckler. Like, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll be on stage telling a joke, and then I'll think of something, and then go off in a different tangent, but then completely lose where I was in the joke. And, and I'm just like, I have no idea how to get back to where I needed <laughs> to be. And I'm awful at that. And I, I don't know how to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> does that, I mean, does that happen to you at all? Because, I mean, with, with luckily, I'm, I have only dealt with a couple of hecklers that were bad, like really bad, mm -hmm. where I couldn't handle it. But normally, it's just I do it to myself. <laughs> like, I'll just go <laughs> off on a tangent and just yeah. forget where I'm at. I've, I've done that before. Uh, I did that. We, we do, uh, uh, stone versus drunk versus sober. Mm -hmm. And I was on team drunk. And so over in, in Jennings, which is a town like right outside of Lake Charles there, like back in the early, late two thousands, there was a, a famous serial killer and it was called the Jennings eight because he killed like eight prostitutes and like left all their bodies in ditches and nobody found the killer. And so it was like a really big deal in the news around here. And I, I was hammered because <laughs> I was on team drunk and I was like, I said something and this lady goes, yeah, I'm from Jennings. And I was like, oh, and I, my mind was racing. I was like, what do I say to this? And I was like, well, you know, I could say something about the Jennings eight, but I won't. <laughs> and uh, I could feel the whole crowd go, Ugh. and I was like, <laughs> guys, I'm sorry. And I was right at the punchline of my joke at the end of my set. And I was like, how do I, this is, and this is, I just fucked up my whole set after yeah. having a fantastic time up here. <laughs> and thankfully the, I, I just went straight back into the joke and then and thankfully the, the, the punchline and everything worked and it, and I ended up getting everybody back, but I was like, damn, I really, I almost shot myself in the foot there. We ended up winning, but I was like, if we don't win, it's because of the Jennings eight. He struck again and he, he killed my set. <laughs> Yeah, I um, actually, I have a pretty good uh, thing to tell uh, hecklers because me and Jacob have dealt with some pretty bad hecklers at, over in Mobile before at this one show. And uh, <laughs> this guy was heckling everybody who went up. And this was a competition. Uh, and the guy was, uh, there was these people that were heckling everybody that went up. And me... I am a 47-year-old drummer who has been playing drums without hearing protection when I was young because I was an idiot. So I can't hear out of my left ear. It's mostly uh, mostly deaf. So I got on stage and I told, as soon as I got on stage, I looked those heckler, the people that were heckling, I looked them right in the eye and I said, look, you've been heckling everybody the whole time. I just want to let you know I'm hearing impaired and I can't fucking hear what you're saying anyway. So you might as well shut up. And that kills two <laughs> birds with one stone. It shuts them up and it makes them feel bad for me. That <laughs> so is awesome. I love that. <laughs> I like using that any, any chance I can. I use that. Yeah. I've, I've had one I've used the past couple of times where someone will say something and I'll be like, cause I, there's a good guy, Patrick Edies, his name is out of Houston. And he was with me that night that I had that uh, situation. And he was like, man, you got to bring him in and let him know, like, hey, this is kind of funny, but this is my show. And I was like, okay. So what I'll do is I'll just be like, I'll, I'll say something to him. And I'll just kind of like joke back with him and agree with whatever they said. And then I'll be like, hey, uh, what's your name? And then they tell me their name. And I'm like, oh, cool. Well, that's all the crowd work I have. So that's <laughs> that's what we're going to do here. So from now on, I'll just take over for the rest of the set. Got it? Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. And I'll just I'll continue with it. So you just got to gotta do like a fun, nice way to do it. Because, man, if you don't and you get angry with them and the crowd isn't on your side, then, it's, then they all turn on you. Then that's just not fun for anybody. And everybody's yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had the entire crowd turn on me before, but I've definitely felt some uh, tension <laughs> in a in rooms before where you're just like, I don't think this is going to finish well. So I'm just going to tell another joke and get the hell out. Yeah. <laughs> I did a, a, a private party, a Christmas party. And uh, the dude was like, yeah, it's for our company party. It's a bunch of construction workers. Y'all can say whatever y'all want. And we were like, okay, cool. Show up to the guy's house in one of the nicest neighborhoods in the city, set up his in his living room, and all of the guys are on one side and all of their wives are on the other side. It was like a middle school dance. Like it, they were all split up 
and all of the guys would laugh at everything and then the women would just sit there <laughs> and they would turn and look at the guys and be like <laughs> so by the time it got to me we had to do an hour by the time it got to me i was like oh dude it was so it was so bad man it was just it was very uncomfortable but you know most corporate gigs are did you get You're paid well for, though for was, yeah was the pay exactly. worth it oh yeah it was definitely worth it yeah so i mean and women are the worst dude i'm back i'm back <laughs> in i'm here now <laughs> <laughs> way to to just run through the room just like like the kool-aid man just like <laughs> oh yeah I'm, women I are terrible <laughs> i've interjected with like three funny things and i was like oh i guess i'm still not coming in and i was muted just like for like 10 minutes yeah was, yeah this is the first time we've heard you in a while man yeah, because when you talk, you're like you're you're. We hear like every third word, so it's just just doing the best you can over there, Jacob. It's it's okay, but uh, we as we start to wrap this thing yeah. up, Jacob Jacob two, do you want to ask Jacob the uh, the the ultimate open micers question? Yeah, and I'm gonna try to ask it quietly because we're on a Zaxby's drive-through right now with the window open, <laughs> so, so they can hear everything that's happening in this car. Thank you, um, Jacob. <laughs> one. <laughs> when when was the last time that you, as an adult, shit your pants? Dude, I don't think I've ever shit my pants as an adult. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yes. This is, Jacob, I feel like we're not going to agree, Jason. I feel like we're best friends now because of that. Yeah, I just, I don't get it. My older brother has that problem all the time. He's like, dude, I, uh, dude, I've just got stains in all my drawers. <laughs> See, Have you ever thought about uh, body control, not <clears throat> shitting yourself as an adult man? Don't do that. Yeah, there's no no reason for it. I think that we're we're team Jacob and team Jason on this issue. I be firmly believe that a as a fully grown adult human being, you should not be shitting yourself unless you have some horrible like like I, I don't know, horrible food poisoning like you're about to die or something like and you just can't get to the bathroom. But as just an adult man, you should not be shitting your pants for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Correct. I am now Jacob one, and you are now Jacob shitting his britches. Yes. <laughs> First of all, the disrespect of me being Jacob two on my own podcast <laughs> is astounding. Also, I can just be Jacob two for Jacob pooping his pants. It's um, the same thing. You're number two. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. Um, and there's a reason for it every time, Jason. The reason is that I can't keep the shit in my butt. Like, what are you talking about? How long are you waiting to shit? <laughs> Until it's an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> every Once every three days. <laughs> yeah. No, like, legit, once every three days. Like, you hit the nail on the head. And see, eating, Zax see? eating Zaxby's for dinner is not going to help your situation either. Not at all. <laughs> Dude, I got to break in my brand new toilet. <laughs> what, in, what in a few days <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude in in three days i have to break in my <laughs> my new toilet if i make it there i get it this is a saving up period this is an investment okay <laughs> yeah i'm investing in my future if i don't make it then i'll just break in my new trash can <laughs> <laughs> see they're gonna... my trash can's a little different though if i if a girl falls into my trash can she's definitely getting pregnant that's oh <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have a feeling that jacob with his new apartment um and the amount of times he shits in his pants i can't imagine how well, how horrible the toilet must be but I, I have a feeling you're going to lose your security deposit when you finally <laughs> move yeah we're not getting it back <laughs> we're gonna break the leash <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's terrible. Hey, I, I can't I have say to make a security deposit right now. <laughs> I can't say anything bad about your eating habits. Uh, I had a Walmart pizza last night. One of those uh, kind of nice ones that you throw in the oven yourself. 
but they're still terrible for you. Yeah. Are you, are you okay, man? <laughs> Which one of us, me? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. It sounds like after both of you, what y'all ate, y'all are both going to be shitting your britches. So... Because, see, Jacob won't eat vegetables. I've tried to get him. We even did a Patreon uh, a Patreon video where I cooked Jacob some very tasty vegetables, and he almost vomited. Yes. His body rejects anything uh, natural and yeah. green. Dude, you cooked me Brussels sprouts. Fuck you for that forever. <laughs> hey, reject modernity and embrace tradition, man. Well, there he goes. He's already he's here. We he's are trying to down, do boys. trying to do the podcast. He's going through the the drive through. He's eating fries. I, I guess we should start to call start to wrap this thing up a little bit. Jacob Jacob won. Usually the show is a little more streamlined than this. Our listeners know this is a very I'm the most professional podcaster of all time. Yeah, yeah, we we know that. I but, believe it. Look, you look like me without a beard, man. I believe you. Right? <laughs> I feel like we we got some common stuff, you know. Uh, but Jacob, are you uh, are you coming over this way at, at any point? Because uh, we do usually do. Uh, we have Tuesday nights open mic at the Juke Joint in Ocean Springs. I don't. I don't know nice. about. I know there's some other uh, open mics over here on the coast, but mm -hmm. um, they have to look it up because they they come and go like crazy. But the uh, the Juke Joint is the one that's pretty steady. Okay. Uh, man, I have, I actually, I'd probably passed y'all up a few weeks ago. I went and did don't tell in Pensacola, uh, with Olivia Cersei. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. that was fun. Um, I want to say I'm, I'm in talks with someone to come over near Alabama. Uh, so I'm, I don't know. I might be, I'm, the plan is yes, but nothing, nothing so far. Uh, mainly a lot of Texas stuff. Yeah. Up. Cause we, um, what our plan is, is we're going to try to build, build up a little uh we're trying to find a place is such a pain in the ass to do a regular comedy show at because we have all these comics that we've talked to from especially from places like austin uh, houston dallas that that want to swing this way uh, on their way through to florida because they come through here all the time because right. they, of course they, you know, there's lake charles to hit there's Lafayette, there's New Orleans, they could hit here, then go to Mobile, and then Pensacola, and then on to Tallahassee, Orlando, wherever they go. This would be a nice middle spot for them to stop at. It's been such a pain <clears throat> trying to find a good venue to hold uh, a, a comedy show at. It's just, I don't know why we're having such a hard time finding a place. Where, where are y'all at exactly? Y'all in Ocean <coughs> Springs? Yeah, I'm from Ocean Springs, and uh, Jacob just moved to Gulfport, so he'll be he'll be an official Gulfport resident as of Saturday. Nice. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> <laughs> How far are you to one of those places from uh, uh, Gulf Shores? Um, we're mm. I'd say about an hour and a half, hour two hours away from Gulf Shores. Okay, I got you. I got you. I'm going. I'm going there over this summer, uh, not for comedy, but for a little trip. Uh, so I didn't know if we'd be in in close proximity. Yeah, I think there's a lot of alien activity over there too, like UFO activity, from what I understand. But that's a topic for a different no. There's podcast. not because it's not real. <laughs> Whoa, conspiracy time! All right. Well, we'll have to have a discussion about that at a later date. No, we won't. Anyway, um, <laughs> Jacob, we will be seeing you because we will both be going on vacation with you to Gulf Shores, Alabama. Um, dude, thank you so much for coming on the pod, man. Um, I'm, we got to do this again where I'm actually like on Wi-Fi because this was awesome. And I'm sorry that I ruined it by being a big dummy. But um, <laughs> dude, tell, tell everyone all about Lake Charles Comedy, where they can follow you and what all you got coming up. Uh, follow Lake Charles Comedy on Facebook, Jacob Gidry Stand Up on Instagram. Those are the two best ways to get everything. Uh, next show, the place we normally do comedy at got hit by a tornado. Uh, so I've had to cancel a whole bunch of shows. Wow. Uh, but got some stuff on the road coming up here in May, but only show I got in Lake Charles, May 9th. It's going to be at uh, Luna's downtown. Uh, I got some comics from Austin coming out. 
Uh, but back in June, we'll be back at it. Heavy hidden back in library and OB. So make sure to follow. Well, fantastic. And I'll, uh, I'll put the link to your, uh, your Instagram in the, uh, the show notes. And, uh, so if you want to follow him, it is at Jacob underscore Guidry underscore stand underscore up. <laughs> can you, can you maybe shorten that up a little bit there? man? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely not. Uh, uh yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> nah, I probably will at some point. But yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll put that link in there. So go follow him. And uh, if you're in the Lake Charles area, go check out some comedy over there. So, uh, Jacob, anything you want to throw out there before we leave this evening while you're eating your French fries? Yeah, man. Um, we've got some more guests coming up on the Open Micro Podcast this month. I've stopped announcing guests ahead of time because every single time I do it, that guest can't. So you're going to have to just watch the show to figure out who it is, or you can go to our website, www.openmarkers.com, to look at that and read our blog, blog post. And, of course, you can always get extra content at patreon.com backslash podcast to watch me get tased, try to almost throw up eating vegetables, eat hot sauce that's so hot it messed me and Jason up for about three days. <laughs> it's, you know, that's that's what, that was the last time I shit my pants, Jason, was because of that stupid <laughs> challenge video. So if you want the origins of that, sign up for our Patreon for a little, a, a dollar a month. Yeah, the last uh, eating video we did, <clears throat> we ate Vegemite, and for some reason we got banned from TikTok for it. So I don't know what happened there. I guess they don't like Australians or something. But anyway, we're going to no go ahead. Does. What'd you say, Jacob? Two? I said no one does. Yeah. Well, we, we 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 like Daniel Salmon. We like him. He's Australian, and so is Thor. Thor's Australian. He's we Australian. Like Jim Jeffries. Yeah, and uh, who's uh, Crocodile Dundee? He's Australian. See, we like Australian yeah. people. Why Nemo. Does it... I don't like Crocodile on Dundee. <laughs> in the streets with him. <laughs> That's not a knife. This is a knife. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you again to, to Jacob Guidry, or, or as we know him here on the show, Jacob One, for coming on the show. And uh, if you want to email us, email us at openmicerspodcast at gmail.com. Of course, like Jacob said, go to openmicers.com for all our blog posts and everything over there. Of course, we have a link tree, too. Link tree slash openmicerspodcast takes you everywhere you need to go. All our socials, all that cool stuff. And of course, Patreon is patreon.com slash ompodcast. We love every single one of you, and we will see you all next week. This is actually busting, boy. <laughs> and uh, that was a show. And thank you so much to everybody for watching on YouTube. We will see you all next week.